4,480 hours. On a calculation, assuming that you do a 40 hour week and you take a month's holiday and you work from the ages of 21 to 65, you will spend 84,480 hours at work. 84,000 hours is quite a lot of time. You could do a lot of stuff with 84,000 hours. If the 10,000 hour rule is true, which says you become a master from 10,000 hours of diligent practice at something. You can become a master of eight things during your career in those 84,000 hours. What would you choose? Juggling? Neuroscience? Lindy Hop? We're going to spend more time at work than we will spend with our children, with our loved ones, with our friends, so the decision about how we choose the right career for us is really important. Which begs the question, why don't we spend any time in formal education discovering who we actually are and how that character might play fulfillingly into the world of work so we can maximize our impact on the world and really enjoy the work that we do. My work is all about helping people to fill that gap, to ask the questions that enable you to discover a career that you really love. And today, I'm going to share with you my method. I've worked with people ranging from those at school or leaving college and university for the first time, people in the middle of their career thinking about making a 180 degree change and people approaching retirement and thinking about that next chapter in their lives. And over and over again, they've all said the same thing. I just want to do something that's about my interests. I want to do something that's meaningful for me. I want to have a positive impact. It sounds simple, but the tricky thing is that the definition of meaningful, interesting, and useful is as unique as the individual in front of me each time. Now your career, it's like a massive adventure. It's like a story waiting to be told and to unfold. It's going to have twists and turns. Unexpected things are going to happen. There might be the occasional ogre or dragon to slay along the way. And yet, you are the star of that story. You are the only character that's in every scene. So the more that you know about that character, the more opportunity you have to be the person holding the pen, writing the next chapter. And each choice that you make helps you discover more and more about what you're about, what you like, and what success looks like to you. Now, this is important because the world of work is changing rapidly. There are jobs around recruiting now that didn't exist 10 years ago. Technology has fundamentally disrupted the way we work, when we work, how we work, and that choice that it's opened up can actually be as much paralyzing as it is exciting. Too much choice is overwhelming. It causes us to become stuck and confused and kind of scratching our heads. So it's really important for us to have a good navigation system based on knowing who we are that helps us to continue to make choices and decisions we feel comfortable about as we navigate this dynamic environment. So what does it take then to have a career that you love? Well, this is my equation. It's very scientific, as you can see. And there's three components that I'm going to introduce you to. The first is how important it is to do things that you truly love and enjoy. We all want the opportunity to use the skills that are fundamental to us as much as possible and get good at them. But how do we know the answer to, so what should I choose? Well, here's my first question. What is it that you truly love to do? 
what is it that you truly love to do? Now, when I ask this, some of the first things that might pop in are things like playing football, or dancing, or eating, or <laughs> cooking. And all of those things are legitimate ways in which people make a living, right? And find fulfilling careers. And sometimes, when we explore the question just at that level, we have a bit of a risk. Because when we, put, we overlay money into your joy at making art or playing the piano, when we put pressure on your cooking skills to produce a living, sometimes that dents the joy in the skill, right? So there is another way to answer the question of doing what you love that's going to allow you to really focus down on your options and still have lots of choices ahead. <coughs> And the way to do it is this, is to find the thing that is so fundamental to your nature that actually you couldn't stop doing it if you tried. So, for example, my other half, he was an engineer and now he's a sculptor. But ever since he was a small child, he loved to create problems for himself to solve. And this usually involved taking things apart and then trying to work out how to put them back together. He's been doing that his whole life through. And that skill set would actually work really well if you wanted to be a fashion designer or a brain surgeon. Both of those things involve exploring problems where you take things apart and put them back together, hopefully in a successful way, <laughs> the brain surgeon. And for me, well, I've always loved talking to strangers. Yeah, I was the weirdo at the bus stop that you were always trying to avoid. <laughs> I've just always loved it. I've always been very nosy about how people work and just really enjoyed forging connections with people. And I've created a very fulfilling career that I absolutely love based on talking to strangers and asking them questions. So I chose, co I chose coaching and writing and speaking, but I could equally have been an investigative journalist or a detective or a talk show host. So here I am talking to strangers and asking you this question. What is it that you absolutely love to do? What is that thing from when you were small that you actually couldn't stop doing? And let's see if we can turn that into your day-to-day -day work. Because actually there are going to be many ways in which that thing you can't stop doing could be applied to the world of work. And those choices will open up for you once you identify that thing that you truly love. So that's part one. Part one is the skills. What is it that I truly love to do? But it's not sufficient to know what our skills and interests and passions are. Although there's a lot of focus on the importance of finding your passion, in itself it's not sufficient. The reason for this is that fit is also really important. That actually the environment is really important for whether or not you're successful in that thing that you love. So for example, I started my career at the Home Office. And that was great because I got to talk to loads of strangers and I got to talk to them about stuff that I cared about. Social justice, social issues, crime and punishment. But the trouble was that the environment didn't really suit who I was. It was quite conservative and the pace was reflective and slow. Nothing wrong with either of those things. It's just that for a sparky and patient sort of person like me, I felt really stifled in that environment, even though it was playing to my skill set. Across the road from the Home Office was the Channel 4 building. And there people were razzing in and out in their trainers, going up and down in their glass lifts, and looking like they were having a much more relaxed but kind of speedy time. And I realised that that was the kind of environment I wanted to put myself in. It took me seven years to cross the road and start working at Channel 4. And I want to save you the seven years. So here's the second question to help you to do that. Behold the cactus. The cactus has a unique design. It's set up to make the most of the environment that it is in. It's a succulent, so it scoops up all of the water that's available and this limited supply, and then it very carefully sticks some spikes around it so any wandering rogue animals can't nosh it and benefit from the water it's stored. You, too, have a totally unique design. And that design is set up to thrive in particular environments. And the more you know about those environments, the more that you can have a career that you love by directing your attention towards the environments that are going to give you that experience. So let me give you some provocations for this. The question is, what experience are you looking for out of your work? What are the kinds of environments in which you tend to feel really good, in which you feel that you already do your best work and thrive? Are you someone 
who loves to go to depth and really specialise, becoming an expert in one particular thing? Are you someone who gets the thrill from knowing a little bit about a lot of stuff? Are you someone who's speedy Gonzales and fast-paced and dynamic? Or are you someone who loves to have the space and opportunity for reflection? Are you someone whose ideal environment is being in the heart of a big corporate office in the city? Or can you imagine nothing better than having an office that's basically a field or a mountain? The answer to these questions are important because fit is the key component that people often miss out on when they're looking for a career that they love. So I'd say get specific about that, give it some good thought, and also be open to experiment, because none of us have been everywhere and done everything. So sometimes you pop yourself into an environment that you think you're gonna love, and it takes you by surprise that there's something that really doesn't work for you, that makes it feel like a pair of misfitting shoes or something like that. And sometimes, conversely, you're not expecting an environment to really have any thrills for you, but somehow you feel just super at home, and you do great work, and your colleagues are fab. And if you're somebody who's considering a, re a sort of reconfiguring of your career, and you've invested a lot of time and energy in your profession, assuming that your profession is in answer to the first question, it's something you can't stop doing, it fits with who you are, I'd invite you to consider changing your environment first before you let go of all the work that you've done. Because you may find that just by shifting the environment, you're able to find that this is a career that you love. So that's part two. Now, what's part three? Well, we are constantly bombarded with definitions of what success looks like. If you're on Instagram, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's all about having glossy hair, or maybe gold teeth, or being a celebrity of some kind. Maybe your grandparents and parents have a point of view about that. They may say it's about stability, it's about a secure and reliable profession, credible profession. <coughs> Either way, whether it's the media or it's our friends or it's what we're looking at on the internet or it's our nationality and cultural history, we're always <coughs> being bombarded with these messages about what success looks and feels like in your career. <coughs> and yet, there's a quiet inner voice inside of you that knows the answer to the question. What do I mean by success? And that may look quite different to some of those messages that you're getting. Maybe for you, success is having the opportunity to work really flexibly so you've got energy and time to focus on the other stuff that's really important to you. Maybe you want to retire by the time you're 40. Maybe you want the opportunity to travel. Maybe you want to solve sexy problems using cutting edge technology. Whatever it is for you is your definition of success and it's the third part of this navigation system to allow you to create a career that you love. And not only have we got to allow ourselves to ask this question, what do I really mean by success for me right now, today? We've also got to give ourselves permission to claim it. Because sometimes there's someone or something from our past that we have to square it with a little bit before we give ourselves permission to go ahead. About 10 years ago, I was at a festival called Sonar in Barcelona, and I'd taken myself on my own. So I befriended a couple of brothers, so I didn't feel too lonely talking to strangers again. And they told me about how their uncle earned a living. They told me that he was a history professor, and that he lived in a camper van traveling around Europe. And that every so often, when he decided it would time, he would email his tribe and say, I'm going to be in Rome doing a tour for five days. And they would come, and he would take them on a tour. And when I heard about this, I was completely blown away. I had ne never occurred to me that it was possible to have a really credible profession to be an expert in something, and yet to be as footloose and fancy free as and as adventurous as this gentleman obviously was. So be open to those stories that inspire you about different definitions of success. It may not be the ones that you're hearing on the loudest channels. When I was in India, I spent time at an engineering school and I was doing a lecture around helping you find direction. And afterwards a young man came up to me and he said that he had been kind of coerced into engineering school by his parents who loved him and wanted the best for him. But actually he was an artist at heart and it made him almost suicidal to have to be fitted into this place where he felt he really didn't belong. And that this conversation about doing what you love had given him permission to make the choice again on his own behalf. 
You know, our folks love us. They want to give us the best advice we can so we'll be successful and happy. And they gave us this huge gift of life. And yet now we have to claim it. And sometimes that might mean making a decision that's different to some of the messages that have been shared with us. So your career, it's a massive adventure. It's an opportunity for you to write your story, to hold on to the pen of your next chapter, and to do it with, in your back pocket, the knowledge about the things that you absolutely love to do, that you must do. The knowledge about the environments in which you thrive and do your very best work. And your own very personal definition of what success looks and feels like. 84,000 hours, 84,000 precious hours. I'd love to know what you're going to choose to do with them. So look me up and let me know. Thank you.